Hi, I'm James. Welcome back. So for the benefit of all the new subscribers, and there have been loads recently, so thank you very much indeed. It's really great to have your support. So for the benefit of those and anybody else who's not been following along with the journey of this channel, I'm basically recreating Bexhill West Railway Station as it appeared back in the day before it was closed. Now, as part of my model, I want to recreate a particular train which visited in October of 1958. And that train was the Rother Valley Rail Tour, and it was pulled by an E1 class locomotive. Now, the E1 class was a derivative of the ex Southeastern and Chatham Railway E class. So I thought rather than make the E1, I would first design and build the E class. And I'll put a picture of my first design thoughts up on the screen there. Now, I got that all designed and was ready to start making it. And I saw that it was possible to buy a kit for an E1, which I did. And if you've watched my last video, you'll have seen me. I designed some, uh, some jigs to enable me to construct the kit. Now, as part of that video, and I unboxed the kit and I went through it, I was quite critical of a few um, elements of the kit. And then I finished the video up by saying, oh, it's not that bad. I'm looking forward to putting it together. And I kind of am. But the truth is these things sort of niggled on me and I thought a little bit about the process of unboxing the, those parts and I wasn't entirely happy with them. And then I looked at the comments and a wonderful comment that got me thinking was uh, from, I've got it just here, was from Michael and, and he wrote, can't I help thinking that with your skills you'd have done better to make the whole loco yourself. And then he went on to talk about his experiences with assembling DJH kits. And that got me thinking, I thought, well, I've designed the E-Class. Why not just do the E1 as well? So today's video is a slightly shorter one. And I'm just going to show you my first design thoughts for how I would go about doing an E1 class locomotive. But given that there are so many clever people who are watching these videos and, and giving me some supportive advice and comments and what have you, as a result of watching them, I thought I'll put this video up there and then I'll ask you to have a look at it and, and let me know if you think I'm um, on the right track, so to speak, or whether you think I've made some design omissions or downright flaws. I'd, I'd really be appreciative of your, your thoughts. If nothing else, it might be a nice opportunity for you to look at a 3D model on the screen of a, a miniature locomotive. It, it might I don't know, give you some insight or help you have some thoughts of your own. Anyway, I'll just show you the design. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much. OK, so let's take a look at my design for what I hope will be an improvement on the DJH kit. I've designed this thing to have uh, some 3D printed parts and some and brass parts which will either be uh, etched brass or I'll, I'll simply cut them out of sheet material. So before we get into it I'll just give you a quick overview of the basic design. Now there's lots of details still to add to this. For example I've got no smoke box door just yet and I'll come to why that is the case in just a minute. Um, some of the detail is a bit sort of minimal but I've sort of tried to take it to more or less where the DJH kit would be in terms of uh, detail at this point. Now you'll see in the back of the cab here there's all sorts of nasties going on here and we'll talk about those in just a second. But that's the, the basic concept. Now before we get into it in detail I'll just add that these wheels, they're the same wheels that I drew when I designed the E-Class locomotive which featured in a previous video. And at the time, I didn't have um, a set of wheels available to me to measure the profiles correctly. So whilst the diameters are correct, I didn't want to put a load of time into designing a complex wheel to then later have to go back and change it. And so for this drawing, I've used the same sort of temporary wheels. That's why the, the spokes are square and, and the flange detail isn't correct. That was just a sort of a placeholder, if you like, for the wheels. And that's important because it, a couple of other details that we'll come to in just a second um, are dependent upon having the correct wheels. Anyway, that's the, the basic engine. As I say, there's no smoke box door. I've not put the boiler bands on yet. And there's one or two other little details that need to be fixed. But 
for now, hopefully this will suffice. So I'll begin by taking a cross section through the locomotive and we can have a look at sort of how it's constructed. So my plan is that the, the main frames will be cut from a brass sheet. Um, they'll either be cut or I will photo etch them. So one of the reasons why I'm allowing myself to become distracted with this little project is because I'm aware that there's probably going to be some photo etched parts and I'm at the point where I need to get some etched brass parts produced for the station canopies for Bexhill West. So I thought whilst I'm in the mindset of thinking about etched brass, I might as well get all the drawing work done for all the etched brass parts. So that's why there's this little locomotive diversion. Anyway, I digress. So these frames will be brass, as will the running boards, um, and the stretchers will be brass as well. I may even use nickel silver. I've, I've not decided yet. Nickel silver is probably slightly easier to solder. The idea here is that the the firebox and the smoke box will be 3D printed. And I'm currently thinking that I'll make the boiler barrel out of a piece of brass tube simply because it'll be nice and easy to solder boiler bands to it. Um, but I may well make this all one, one 3D printed piece. Certainly I, I did a test print which you've seen before for the E-Class and a one piece 3D print was just simple. So I may well go down that route. The idea is that a bolt will be able to pass down through the chimney and fasten the smoke box to this stretcher block here. So this will have a tapped thread just here and a bolt should be able to hold that front end of the boiler and smoke box assembly uh, firmly in place. That's the idea. I may change that idea. I may bring a bolt up from underneath um, with the advantage that I could then have the smoke box being completely open which would enable me to put a DCC chip inside. There will be um, a stretcher across between the frames just here and we'll talk a little bit about why that's potentially useful there in just a minute. The motor and gearbox, so this is the same motor and gearbox, this is a 1220 motor and a high level um, gearbox that I've designed this for. Now on the E-Class which has um, slide, uh, slide valves rather than piston valves, the boiler barrel sits a little bit lower. And this arrangement was perfect in that it placed the motor squarely in the center of the sort of concentric with the diameter of the, of the boiler barrel. In this case, it still works a treat, but I think I may well, there's some adjustment on this gearbox and this this point here can be arranged to lift up slightly. I'll, I'll, I'll perhaps put an overlay on here in, in the, when I edit the video to show you what I mean. So it will be possible for me to raise the motor up. And my idea here is to try and get the motor as high in the firebox as possible, because then I'll end up with quite a bit of space just here where I can mount additional ballast weights. So I'm concerned that this is going to be quite a lightweight engine if I have a 3D printed um, superstructure, you know, boiler and, and what have you. If that's all 3D printed, then there's not going to be much weight on this thing, so it might not might not go as well. An alternative, and, I, and this is something else I'm thinking about, and so really I'm up for some suggestions and comments from, from the viewers here. I, I could cast this in white metal myself, which would had, have the advantage of increased weight. Um, which would be great for traction. However, there's a lot of white metal potentially on the front end of the locomotive where it's not doing any driving. Another option I considered was to do the cab and the firebox in white metal, getting as much weight as possible over those driving wheels and then having this as a plastic 3D printed part on the front. So if you're watching this and you've got any thoughts around that, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. If you've built something similar, um, I'd like to know your thoughts. OK, so we've got another stretcher arranged across the um, between the frames here. In fact, if I I'm just going to adjust this section a little bit, if I bring this across, let's go to. Let's go to here. 
Oh, it's not letting me put a cross section there. Let's let's try that. Okay, that's a little bit, little bit better. You can see a little bit more what's going on here. So the bogey will go on this sort of swinging arm, which is probably familiar. I think lots of um, model locomotives are built in this way. And this will provide a little bit of side travel. The way it's constructed on the end here will limit that side play a bit, but I think we've got plenty there. And then, of course, the bogey itself will freely swing around that. So we should have plenty of free travel here. It's actually quite hard to control using the mouse, and especially when you're talking. Um, so <laughs> I'll probably leave that bogey in a bit of a funny place. So the idea here, the principle behind this stretcher that I mentioned previously, is that not only can that be used to secure um, uh, like a cast block of lead or something in here for additional weight but I'm thinking I can have a, a an insulated um, piece of PCB or something bolted to the underside of here uh, that my wheel pickups can connect to so let's turn the cross section off and, and zoom back in so that's there we go and you can see that articulation on that bogey so it would be possible, for example, to look at this and I can just examine what the clearances are around those wheels. However, because I haven't got the correct wheels yet, and these are only temporary, I'm not going to make any adjustments that I might need to make around these frames until I've measured up the correct wheels and I know exactly what, I, what I'll be using. I suspect that in practice when I build this thing, I'll, I'll probably end up just taking a file to these frames and adjusting them where necessary. Oh, I've thought of something else that I'll mention, because if I forget to mention it, um, somebody will probably pick it up and question it in the comments. If I zoom back to here, we've got a bit of a diagonal zoom arrangement going on. There's, a, there's an unusual view for you. Again, because I've got the sort of temporary wheel drawings, you can see there's some clearance issues here. And again, if we have a look at the back of the, um, in, in the cab, we've got clearance issues here. I, I will adjust this drawing and make this all so that it, it fits and I've got adequate clearances, but there seems no point until I've decided on the final wheel arrangement. So this will change. It's a bit of a, if I turn the section off, this is a bit of a bugbear and something which frustrates me a little bit. So, you can see here I've got the the back head of the boiler needs needs some adjustment. It tape it should taper down at the sides a little bit, and I will do that in time. But because we're looking at double O gauge and it's not a scale a scale gauge, these boxes to sort of these splasher boxes to cover the wheels in are necessarily very very close together which makes this all look rather odd in here i'm hoping that when the thing's finished and the cab doors are on and the tenders on that you you won't really see in there but that's a that's a bit of a, a bit of a shame a necessary evil though i'm afraid now i've just noticed something here which i meant to correct you'll see the wheels are not centered on the frames they need to just slide across slightly so that's something i need to to modify anyway quick video i wanted you to have a little look see my thoughts if you've got any ideas yourself around um, how you think this should be constructed then please let me know um, and the real question i've got is should i be doing this upper structure all cast in white metal or it could be fabricated in brass i guess there's no reason why it couldn't be i think that due to the complexity of the firebox and the splashers just for speed i think that would benefit from either being a 3d printed part or a 3d printed mold for a white metal part anyway those are my thoughts if you've got any thoughts of your own please do let me know in the comment section as always i'd love to hear from you oh finally one other thing i may as well mention one of the joys of producing something like this in 3D on the computer is that we can, of course, animate it. So it's quite fun to, 
to let the wheels roll around and also we can adjust the brake gear as well which is a little bit silly however it's quite good to just gauge the that it's all correct I think it's more or less from the the works drawings these are pretty much to scale and again these would be brass etches and I've allowed for let's see if I can see if I can highlight the part so the frames have little holes drilled in them into which I will just solder a wire and then these would be etches that will just solder onto those they won't swing in real life that would probably be a bit of a tall order to achieve that in in double o gauge but certainly that we'll have brake gear anyway that's enough of that i don't want to wrap it on any longer uh, if you have any thoughts do please let me know well i hope that my thoughts around that e1 locomotive design were clear and make sense if you've got any experience of your own then do please let me know in the comment section i really would be delighted to hear from you so moving forward Next week we should see a return to Bexhill West and I'll show you the progress with the with the model itself um, and you can see where I've got to with that. Until then, thank you very much for sharing your time with me. It's really appreciated and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.